this video we're going to show you a few processes to cure and to cook some venison. We'll start off with cutting up our venison. We're getting our venison here prepared to make some salami and some breakfast sausage. We want to cut it into little chunks so when we put it through the grinder that our grinder will be able to handle it. We have a small grinder. And there's different types of grinders that you can get a hold of. You can get a hold of electric grinders or you can get a hold of hand crank grinders. And we have both. And we'll be showing you different ways to add the spices and we'll discuss the spices that we're going to use. We'll grind it, cut this into a little pile of meat. These are some of the trimmings of the meat that we didn't turn into burger. but instead we're going to use them for, for our curing. This particular part of meat here that I'm cutting up and getting ready to prepare is going to be breakfast sausage. We've created our own recipe for some of these things. We've tasted lots of different kinds and we just found one that works well with our family and with our friends that dine with us. Get this all cut up. Now when we're making breakfast sausage, in most cases venison is very lean, uh, very little fat in it. So we have to add, I'm going to move right over here, get it, so I have a bowl of pork fat that I've kept in the freezer. And I'm going to add some of my pork fat now to this venison because we need to have about a 30% mixture so that it's not too dry. Just smear that through the meat. Now when we grind this, we're going to grind the spices right in with the meat. And we'll move over here and I'll explain the different spices that we use. Here's a little spice tray. Everything that we cure, we can do with just what I have here. We use a very minimum of spices. One of our main spices right here is salt. And as you can see, we have canning and pickling salt. I recommend highly that you do not use iodized salt. It doesn't work. The other thing that we're going to use is brown sugar. And I like the cane sugar. Cane sugar seems to have a better uh, effect with the meat when you're trying to cure it out. Seems to penetrate it better. Another thing, right here we're going to use coarse ground black pepper. Or we can use regular ground black pepper <coughs> also. I use both. Another thing that's another spice is garlic powder. 
That's a big spice in many things that we use today that's cured, especially in salamis. Additional spices are red pepper, liquid smoke, this gives it the hickory flavor <clears throat> when you don't have time to smoke it, sage, ground coriander, and we use the sage for a sage sausage, and if we leave the sage out and put coriander in, we get a German style of sausage. And we have whole mustard seed, this we'll use in the salami. Soy sauce, which is basically used in our jerky. And lemon juice, which I use in both the breakfast sausage and <clears throat> the, the salami. Just a very little bit of it. Now, we're going to add some spices to our meat that we just worked on over here. And for our breakfast sausage, the main spices that we're going to use are salt. We'll set that right over here. Brown sugar. Not very much of that. Our liquid smoke we're going to use, but I have some already mixed up. I mix about two to one of liquid smoke and lemon juice in a little spray bottle and I can just spray it on everything. So that's the way we're going to do that. And we prefer a, a little spicier breakfast sausage, so we're going to use a little red pepper in it. Add a little more spice and definitely our garlic, black pepper, and today I think we will make a little of the sage type of breakfast sausage. Okay. Now, we'll begin by adding the spices. What we're going to do is put everything together for our breakfast sausage now. We have about five pounds of venison, we have a pound and a half of pork fat mixed with it, and we'll start out with adding our salt. To our, to our sausage we will add one and a half tablespoons of our salt. Kind of sprinkle it around. All right. And then with that, we got to add some black pepper, so we'll have one tablespoon. Let me get the black pepper. Huh? <laughs> one tablespoon of black pepper. sausage like this you can use the finer ground black pepper if you want to. It works well. Then we'll add to that we'll add our garlic, garlic powder, and we have one and a half teaspoons that and 
like I said, we're going to make this a little bit hotter. So we're going to add one teaspoon. We're going to add one teaspoon of red pepper. It's going to be a spicy breakfast sausage. into the sausage. And we'll move this over to our grinder here where we'll grind it up. For the Montana breakfast sausage you should use five pounds of venison, one and a half pounds of pork trim, one and a half tablespoons of salt, make sure it's the canning or pickling type, one and a half teaspoons to one tablespoon of black pepper, whichever you desire, one and a half teaspoons of garlic powder, one to one and a half teaspoons of red pepper, depending on how spicy you like it. The optional things that you can put into it are two teaspoons of brown sugar and one half teaspoon of sage or as I explained while we were videoing coriander. Hi this is my wife Chris and she's going to show you some ways to prepare venison. We know there are a lot of ways to prepare it but she has three of her favorite ways that she's going to show you today. Thank you Don. Three of my favorite ways to prepare venison. The pot roast, with vegetables. We're going, to, we're going to put some burger together into some venison meatballs with gravy. And we also took out of the freezer some venison steak and we're going to show how to pan fry that for a quick, easy, and delicious meal. Alright, for uh, pot roast, I do it all on the top of the stove. Uh, it's a long, uh, slow cooking, simmering process. It makes it nice and tender and juicy. First, I put about three tablespoons of margarine into the pan. I already have it warmed up here. And uh, we're going to put the, this nice shoulder roast in there and brown it on all sides. And uh, the, the pan will get hot here in just a second. We're going to warm that up and start it browning. Now, it's extremely important that you brown all sides of the meat because that seals the edges of the meat and keeps that wonderful good juice in there. Now, while you're in the process of sealing it, you can also season it. I like to put paprika on my meat. It's a, really a ground red bell pepper, dried, and I like the flavor of it. Used to be I thought that that was only for putting on top of deviled eggs, but I have discovered that it makes a wonderful seasoning for meat as well. 
I use a little bit of garlic powder. Some onion powder. Why do you use the powders and not the salt? Um, I don't use salt because the salt makes the meat tough. And you'll notice I didn't put any salt on the meat at this point. When you cook salt on your meat, it causes it to lose its juices and it becomes tough. So you want to save the salt until the last, after your meat is already cooked. So here, it's starting to fry now and it's gonna get nice and brown. I like to use margarine to fry my things in and sear them up good. Uh, it gives it a good flavor that we like. Some people like to use um, bacon grease. It's really nice, um, but the secret is to get it good and brown on all sides. So we'll turn this over here. All right. Now that's going to take a while to fry on all sides, and I'll uh, show you the vegetables that we'll use, and then we'll come back to this as it's browning. I have uh, potatoes, carrots, and onions ready for in the pot roast. It's really a standard for pot roast, and uh, makes a meal in one dish. It's really nice for after church on Sunday or after a long day out in the field. Put a lid on that so the grease doesn't splatter around, but we'll keep it at a high temperature while you're browning. Don't uh, turn it down now. We want it uh, to get good and brown. Help me with this, Don, will you? Sure. Now we're ready for the meatballs. We have a pound of hamburger here, and we're going to add to it the things that you would, similar to what you would put in a meatloaf. We're going to put in an egg, the egg holds the, uh, the stuff together. Yeah, I'm glad you're here helping me. We're going to put in some chopped onion. About a half a cup chopped onion. A cup of breadcrumbs. Thanks. And, um, whoops, we're missing a scroll. Let's put in half a teaspoon of garlic powder. And I like paprika. We're going to put in about a half a teaspoon of paprika. We're also going to put salt in this right away. Um, About a half a teaspoon is nice. If you like more or less, that's something you can always adjust. Now we're going to stir this up real well and make the meatballs. I can hear our roast warming up over there and starting to get brown. Let's give it a turn and see how it's doing. Smells good, doesn't it? All right. Let's turn it over here. And you see that's getting nice and brown now. We want it to get a little brown so that we will um, have a nice brown gravy when we're done to go along with it. That's where your flavor really comes from. Okay, I will brown that other side for a little bit before we put the vegetables in. On the meatballs, we're going to work this around a little bit so that the breadcrumbs mix in real well with the meatballs, and we'll fry them in a frying pan. Do you suppose you could get that uh, big heavy iron frying pan out of the bottom of the go there for me? I like to fry in an iron frying pan. It may be a little old fashioned, but rumor is this is good for you. It also holds the heat very nicely. Thanks. 
and it um, and fries evenly. So we'll turn that on and get it started. And again, I'm going to use some more margarine. to uh, work in the bottom of the pan. If you'd like, you could use uh, a no-stick frying pan. And you wouldn't have to use as much uh, oil or fat in your pan. But I think that you can, uh, you can compromise a little bit because venison is so nice and lean. And that's why it's so good for you. What do you think, Don? Is that smooth enough there? Those Very good. Bread comes disappearing. This is the gooey part. So I take the meatball. You can make them any size you like, but not too big. They fry a little better if they're not real big. Thanks. You know what I like. This is a nice variation, too, to the endless meatloaf and hamburgers routine. Uh, it makes a nice company dish. It makes it a little more fancy than just plain hamburgers when you can serve it with some gravy. Also been frying for a little while, and they're starting to get brown on the bottom side. You want to let them get brown so that you have some brown in the bottom of your pan to make a good gravy. So we'll turn them over and get them browning on the other side. I turned them a couple of times so that they appear just a little more round instead of flat on two sides. are getting nice and brown. We're going to let them fry some more and we'll come back to them in just a minute. Okay, we ground our meat as you see over here and this is ready to package. We can turn it into a patty or in the morning with some eggs and we will put it into about one pound packages. We'll wrap this up and our sausage is ready to turn over to the cook. Well, we'll see you in the morning for breakfast. Now the next thing that we're going to do is we are going to mix spices now in meat that is already ground. We're going to make up some salami here. And with this, what we're going to use is a plastic bag. It takes a little longer to make the salami than it does the breakfast sausage. And even if you have your meat ground commercially, you can actually put your spices in and put it in a bowl and explain to your butcher that you would like that particular batch of meat ground by itself. Okay, here we have our lean meat. We're going to put all the spices in for our salami. Now, with our salami recipe, again, we're going to be using our salt. And we need about one tablespoon full. We'll just sprinkle that around. We'll also need some of the brown sugar now. And We'll use about one teaspoon, because I could use the teaspoon, one teaspoon of brown sugar. We have about a pound of meat here. One teaspoon of brown sugar. Now the reason we're putting it in a plastic sack like this is we have to refrigerate it for a couple days and we have to knead it. And in order to work that spice through the meat and knead it for a few days, it's best in a plastic bag. Another one of the spices that we're going to use is, again, the pepper. 
salt and pepper are the two most common spices used in curing meat. And on that, we're going to use about three-fourths of a teaspoon. Mm -hmm. yeah, that's pretty good. The next spice that we use is our whole mustard seed. And we'll use about a half a teaspoon. Half a teaspoon of whole mustard seed. The next spice that we we'll use is our liquid smoke. And we'll use about a half a teaspoon of that also. Like the lips of our bottle off. And the last thing that we'll put in is, again, garlic powder about three quarters of a teaspoon. size, you can just use one bag. But I didn't have one in large enough size that I could really work the meat. So I'm using a thinner plastic sack. And we'll knead this around. And it will take you about three days to complete the process of making salami. And you keep it in the refrigerator, refrigerator the entire time. And every day you work it through. You need it every day. Okay. That'll be enough to start for today. Let's put it into our other bag. <coughs> And away we go to the refrigerator. Okay, we, you want to put that in the refrigerator for us? We'll go on to the next part. The last part that we're going to do with our curing of meat is we're going to work with some jerky. That's probably one of the most popular processes used in making uh, venison in a cured form. And here we have a roast, and we just took the roast out of the freezer, or you can do it fresh, and we're going to slice it into strips about a quarter inch thick, between an eighth and a quarter inch thick. That's what we slice it in. We'll slice it in strips like that. We can use it. And you always cut with the grain not across the grain like you do for steaks. Or when you're making your cuts across for your roast, get rid of any, any fat that's left on the animal. Get rid of that when you're making jerky. We're going to cut
You just cut it into those little strips. Let's keep working it. Getting it into those strips. And while I continue the process here, we'll go back to Chris and she will show you uh, how she's getting along in the kitchen. Well, our meatballs are getting browned up pretty nice and our roast is coming along just great. You'll see we have a nice brown roast on both sides and there's some good brown drippings in the bottom of this pan. Now, there's also a little bit of juice starting to form in the bottom of the pan. And what we're going to do now is we're not going to put the vegetables in yet. We're going to let the roast cook by itself for a while and put the vegetables in just long enough for them to cook later. So we're going to put the lid back on the roast and turn it down to low and let it simmer for about an hour and a half to two hours. Do not put any liquid in it. The juices from the roast well, since it's down on low and the lid's on tight, it'll be okay. If you get a little nervous about it, you can check it after a while. But don't open the lid too often because the steam escaping will lose some of your moisture. So we have that ready to go for quite a while. And on these meatballs, we're going to take those out of the pan and we'll show you a real quick way to make a nice brown gravy. When the, if you try to make the gravy with the meatballs in the pan, you'll break them up. So let's just take those out of there. And in the bottom of the pan, we have some nice brown drippings that will uh, mix with the flour. They'll make a nice gravy. There are two methods for making gravy. And I'll show you both of them today. We've got the pan, and there's still some um, uh, plenty of shortening in the bottom of the pan. We're going to sprinkle a little flour in there, about one to two tablespoons, to make the gravy. And we're going to turn it up a little bit and mix the flour and the drippings all together really good. Say, Don, could you give me a hand and bring me a um, cup of water? Okay. And if you see some lumps coming around in your flour, it's a good time just to take the back of your spoon and smash them down flat. And I use cold water. Your pan's not really hot, but um, not real, real hot, because you're stirring this around and working on it. And you just pour that cold water in there all at once and start stirring. Now, the reason you use cold water is, thanks, dear, that allows your flour to mix with the water right away in the pan before it actually starts to cook and thicken. And uh, so you just stir that around and around while your water starts to heat up. And as it heats up, it'll start to thicken and you'll have minimum lumps that way. Good homemade gravy has one or two lumps. Now, if you wanted to have variety on this dish, you could add mushrooms to your gravy. Wild mushrooms would be very good. You could add uh, sliced green pepper. And maybe serve it with some rice. It would be very nice. So. It's looking really good now. Just keep stirring it the entire time it's cooking so it doesn't stick to the bottom of your pan or get thicker on the bottom and get lumps. Of course, before you finally put it in the bowl, you're going to want to taste it. It needs just a little salt. What do you 
do you think, Don? Check it out. Yeah, that's okay. Good. Tastes good. Now we'll just pour that over top of your meatballs, and they'll be ready to serve. Gently stir your meatballs in so they're all covered with gravy. That didn't take very long at all. No, it's a very fast dish that looks dressy for your so, table. So that's about what? It took you about 15, 20 minutes to do that whole thing. Right. It doesn't take long and it's nourishing and warm and um, it looks good. It looks better than just a plain hamburger. Yeah. Now, what about your roast? Anything going to happen there? Well, we're leaving the lid on now. We don't want to look at that yet because it must simmer for a while. If we take the lid off, we're going to let the moisture out. So okay. we're just going to let that set for a while. For venison meatballs, we'll need one pound of ground meat, one half cup chopped onion, one cup bread crumbs, one half teaspoon paprika, one-fourth to one-half teaspoon garlic powder, one-half teaspoon of salt, or as much as you like for taste, three tablespoons of margarine, and one egg. In the gravy, we put two to three tablespoons of flour and one to one and a half cups of water. Okay, we're back at the jerky. I sliced it as you see, in nice strips. And I've sliced the jerky. And what we're going to do is we're going to place these strips in a pan. We'll have a couple layers of it. put a recipe together of the spices that we use to put on the jerky. And to do that, I've already mixed it up over here in my favorite cup. But I'll share with you each part that goes in to making it. We're using one pound of meat and it has to be lean. And then we're going to use, with our salt, we use one teaspoon of salt, plain. And we have a quarter, quarter teaspoon of the black pepper. And we'll have one tablespoon of the brown sugar. And I'm reading this off my recipe here, so I make sure I get it exactly right. We have one teaspoon of garlic powder. And we have two tablespoons of liquid smoke. And we have one tablespoon of soy soy sauce and then we're going to make our jerky just a little bit spicy and so we added a quarter teaspoon of red pepper and when we get it all together we mix it up and you can see it comes out in kind of a brown sauce and it starts smelling just like the jerky is going to taste now a lot of times you'll get used to doing these things and you will not have to measure exactly. You just get a feel for things of how you put it together. We're just going to put some of this. I'm going to rub it over. As you can see, just take my spoon and just put a little bit of this on our meat. We get each part of the bottom covered. Then we're going to put the next layer in. OK, 
Then we'll follow the same process all the way through. And all this sauce will go on this meat. Put our last layer in. Now, we are going to leave this set for a couple days in the refrigerator before we finish the process. And each day, we're going to take and we're going to stir it up a little so that it marinates through the entire pound of meat that we have. And you can do this with any type of lean, lean meat. When you put it in the refrigerator, you want to put a lid on it. It has to be sealed. As you can see, that's what it'll look like. We'll put a lid on it, and we'll put it in the refrigerator. Now, we'll go over to our recipe of our mountain man jerky and we'll go through it one more time. For a mountain man jerky we need one pound of lean meat, one teaspoon of salt, canning or pickling type, one fourth teaspoon coarse ground black pepper, one tablespoon brown cane sugar, one teaspoon garlic powder, two tablespoons of liquid smoke, one tablespoon soy sauce, and for a little spice, one quarter teaspoon red pepper. Let's look in on our pot roast. There it is, nice and brown. It's been simmering for about an hour and a half now. And we're going to put the vegetables in it and turn up the heat and let it finish. Let's cut those onions in half. Put the carrots in, potatoes. It's going to make a full kettle of delicious dinner. When I put the onions in, I put them right on top of the meat, so that adds a little bit to the flavor also. And this is where I add the salt, right on top of the vegetables and the meat all at once. However much salt that you want, we prefer to go a little light on the salt. We're ready to go. You do not have to add any more water. Turn up the heat just a little bit. There is uh, plenty of liquid in the bottom. And, uh, and I'm going to move it to another burner because we're going to start showing the pan fried steak. Okay, for pan fried steak, we're going to move the roast out of the way and we've used this front burner so that we have good hot fire under our pan. I'm using an iron frying pan again, but whatever you like to fry things in. We'll put a little margarine in there. And put the steak in. Make sure it's nice and hot when you put it in. And again, I do not season it, especially with salt, right away. Just let the steak brown real nice on one side. It'll take a few minutes. But this is round steak. Um, it is uh, one of the tougher cuts of steak, so you want to be sure to fry it very quickly. And then it will not have time to toughen up on you. Um, you want to be able to fry your meat almost clear through, but just enough so that there's a little uh, pink left in the middle if you fry it. Beyond that, it's going to be too tough. So 
uh, if, you, if you prefer a more tender steak than that, possibly uh, a Swiss style steak would be to your liking. But loin steaks fry very nicely in the quick fry method. Okay, this takes just a couple minutes to fry up. Okay, now these been, have been cooking for about one and a half to two minutes. And you'll notice on the back of the steak, it's starting to look nice and brown. And uh, we want to make sure that's there before we turn them over. Okay, we're going to go ahead and turn them over so that they can fry quickly on the other side. You also want to be, uh, use a burner that is as big as your pan so that you have uh, a good hot surface all over. This is the point where you add the salt if you would like salt. Add a little salt. Our family likes a hint of garlic powder. And if you like a little black pepper, you can add a little black pepper at that point. But otherwise, whatever spice you like, now maybe some all-season spice. And let it fry again for just about the same length of time. And we'll come back to it in just Okay, our meat's been frying for about a minute and a half more. You'll see the juice is starting to come up through the top there, and that's about the time you want it to take off. So let's take a piece off and check it quick. Oh, looks good. Dinner in a minute. Yep, just right. And you'll see there's just a little bit of pink in the center of this, uh, and that's the way you want it. You do not want to overcook it. So let's take the rest of that out of the pan. Bob says that piece is his. He's been eyeing that piece ever since he's been taking a picture of this. He's getting hungrier and hungrier. Well, we have to admire his willingness to stay behind the camera instead of being over here sampling. Now you'll notice in the bottom of the pan a fine opportunity for brown gravy. If you're inclined for gravy, and that is what would really make a nice gravy. So, that's it. Bob, watch. Mmm, is that good? <laughs> okay, last of all, we're ready to look in on our roast. And there it is, cooked potatoes and carrots and onions and a wonderful roast to make a full meal. Oh, we need some blueberry pie. Okay, we'll finish up our jerky and our salami. Now we've had the jerky in its brine for two to three days. You can actually uh, take it out of the brine after one day and, and put it in the oven and dry it out. And we have our salami, it's ready to go. And we're gonna put a little bit on this tray here of each to show you how it's done. Best thing to do Put a little oil, vegetable oil, on first. Now the reason for the vegetable oil is to keep the meat from sticking as we're drying it. We'll just take that, just rub it all over the aluminum foil. I put aluminum foil on this pan, and that saves me a whole lot of cleanup also. You might have a pan that's a no-stick surface that would work great. brown color, getting kind of brownish in the meat. We'll take on the color of the sauce. So we'll put that on the tray. A couple strips on. OK. 
Okay, enough for that. That'll give you some idea how to put your lay out your jerky. We'll take some of the salami. We'll take it. And we're going to roll it into little logs. Thin little logs. any size you want. Squeeze it down, pat in the ends. This is one of the better parts, the flavor, you can smell the flavors, the odors in it of the salami flavor. And the jerky, what it is. Now we'll take this and we'll put it in the oven about 175 degrees. On most ovens you, it doesn't have a mark for 175. A lot of them stop at 200 degrees and they go on down to warm. They may have a dot for 150 so it's somewhere in between those areas and it'll take 8 to 10 hours and about every two hours you want to turn it. You want to turn it over, keep it from sticking to get all sides dry. Same way with the jerky, you'll flip it over. If, you're, if your aluminum foil is really getting dry or something like that, take a little more oil when you move it. Pour a little more oil on you, take your fingers quick, rub it through, and just keep drying it. Uh, after you have it dried, you can take the jerky and you can put it in an airtight container if there is no fat on it, and it will last for a long time. And the salami, I would recommend that you put that in, in your freezer, and slice what you need for your parties or whatever. It's uh, awful good for an evening snack, and you can use it when you go to hunting camp, and it will remind you of last year. So there's our tray. It's ready for the oven. And you can practice and see how easy this is. We didn't use many spices. It was very simple. Well, here we have some of the salami and some of the jerky that we made. Now you notice the jerky is dried meat and it dried out. Yeah firm and we'll take a piece of it and we'll cut some strips off you'll get to taste it see you can see it's dried it's hard harder kind of like a dried beef smell good like that good okay and Starbucks stuff good that's that's our goal. <laughs> I'll do the commercial. <laughs> okay, here is salami, a salami snack. See, slice a piece off. We'll slice a little more for you. You notice it's just hand rolled. We dried it at the same time with the jerky in the oven. All of it dried. And we used the liquid smoke. That's the smoke flavor you taste in it. Okay, here. Try some of that. See if you like the salami. How come it's softer? No. Oh, it's ground up? It's ground meat, right. Mm -hmm. Okay. It's like when we made the breakfast sausage. Mm -hmm. You know, we grind that up, put the spices in, only that you fry okay. to make it. Okay, this we cure it out and then we dry it. Okay. It's 
good. Good. Yeah. It's nice and spicy. Up from the field to the table. We got it. We got it. Well, Bob, what do you think about our video series? Well, I sure had a lot of fun doing it, and I learned a lot through this time. Well, good. The purpose of this series is to teach people how easy it is to take an animal from the field all the way to the table in simple, easy steps. And with it, we share some of our secrets, like jerky and salami, to help spice it up a little. Yeah, Don, it was sure a lot easier than I thought it would be. Well, when I started the process 20 years ago, teaching people with Ross, if you remember, with the antelope, why we've been building and building the process and finding the easiest way for people to learn to understand it. And so now that we've gone down through these years, a lot of my friends still call me and say, Don, how do you do this? It's not because they don't remember understand the process is because when you only do it once a year you forget some of the parts and so I said okay we'll we'll produce something to help you guys out and so that's when I got a hold of you and we talked about it and decided that we'd go ahead and try and produce a, a simple uh, process step by step for people to learn how to take care of their wild game well, I'm sure ready to try that out this fall. Well, great. And we'll probably have a lot of opportunity to do it. Don, now that we've uh, done these videos, uh, what do we do next, Coach? Well, why don't we head to Montana and get up into the high mountains, the Rockies there, and show people how easy it is to pack out an elk if it's done correctly. That sounds great. I'm ready. Well, let's start preparing. Let's go.